While GPS watches can range from budget to budget busting, Garmin always does a great job providing at least a couple of options that really deliver on value and features. This is the Garmin 255 Music, and at $400, this update to the Forerunner 200 series is more expensive than ever. But is it still one of the best values in running? It's time to put on the Garmin 255 Music and take it for a run. Ten point zero miles with 949 feet of climbing over in Stearns Fen, a park that is local to me now that me and my family have moved out to the suburbs of Chicago. A perfect way to round out my testing of the Garmin 255 Music. I've been wearing this thing for about a month and taking for everything from trail runs where I was going to need some help with navigation to races and easy runs and all sorts of other runs in between. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this watch after my month of testing, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a watch that I bought myself. No one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Garmin 255 Music. First, let's go over what's inside. Let's go over some specs on this watch. It's a 1.3 inch screen with a 260 by 260 pixel resolution display. It's covered in Corning Gorilla Glass 3 and has a fiber reinforced polymer bezel. That means it's a plastic case and that all helps keep the weight down at just 49 grams. As far as batteries go, Garmin says that you can get up to 30 hours of GPS only. So for those of you that need this for those really long ultra marathon races, you guys should be fine for the most part. If you're using GPS plus music at the same time, plus all the other stuff that the watch can do, you're going to really be draining that battery and you're gonna be maxing out at six and a half hours. But for most of you, even if you have mapping navigation on, music, and GPS tracking, you'll be able to get through your marathon. And in terms of real life testing, I was able to use this watch for about four days without charging before I started getting nervous about having enough battery for the next activity. In terms of the sensors that are inside, it doesn't feel like Garmin has skimped at all. It's got pretty much everything in it. It's got the GPS glow and ass and all the other radios that you're gonna need for positioning no matter where you are in the world. It's got a compass, a thermometer, a gyroscope, an accelerometer, a barometric altimeter, heart rate sensors in it as well, right on the back so you get a wrist-based heart rate, and a pulse oximeter. Now that's what's inside the watch. Now how does Garmin put all that stuff together and what can you really do with it? So you could do everything that you would expect from a GPS running watch in terms of basic activity tracking. You can set it up so you can go for a run, give you your pace, distance. It could tell you how much climbing you've done over the course of an activity as well because it has that barometric altimeter built in. I was able to pair this with a stretchy nylon aftermarket brand that I was just able to get a couple of them on Amazon. Uh, and that actually worked really well for me because I'm able to get this watch a lot higher on the wrist. And then because this watch is so light, it stays up there and I don't have to use an external heart rate monitor anymore. I feel like I get a pretty reliable heart rate tracing just from the high wrist based optical sensor. And in addition to running, it could track a wide variety of activities. So really this turns into a multi-sport watch because it can track you while you're swimming. It could track you while you're on the bike, plus any other activity that you might be doing outdoors or in the gym. Now, in terms of kind of intermediate or more advanced features, this Garmin 255 Music has that as well. So if you just want to do like manual lap timing for your workouts, you can certainly do that. But what I really like to do with watches like this is set up structured workouts. So that way I don't have to worry about hitting the button. I don't have to worry about making sure I'm not resting too long and making sure that I'm 
running the right amount of time for my intervals. You can set that all up in the app and push that workout to the watch. And then you load that workout before you start your activity. And then the watch guides you through the rest of the workout from your warm up to your work phases, your recoveries, and even down to the cool down. And then when you're done with that, then that packages the data really nicely. So you can look at it afterwards to make sure you've hit all the right effort levels and hit all the right splits. Another thing that I find really useful for it and that I've been using a lot now that we're in a new town and I have to explore a whole new set of routes is that there are maps that are available for guided navigation. And what I've been doing is making routes on Strava, which I like to make my routes there because then no matter which watch I'm testing, all my kind of routes are in the same spot. Then I could push from Strava to Garmin and then get it right onto the watch. And again, before I start the run, you pull up which route you're gonna be running and then what I like about the maps on Garmin is that it's uh, not a fully featured like topographical map that I'm looking at on the 255 music. But what I am seeing is the direction that I'm currently running in, plus also the entire intended route and then a darker line that shows me where I actually ran instead. So sometimes when I don't quite get it right, it lets me know that I'm veering off course in something that kind of reminds me of like Etch-A-Sketch in terms of like the colors and the way that the different line shadings look. But it's really effective for me because it doesn't completely prevent me from taking the wrong turn when I'm out there on the trails. But it has helped me to realize pretty quickly when I am going the wrong way. I think that the altitude on the watch is very accurate. I've been going to a lots of different high altitude places lately, which is not something I normally do. So whether I've been in Denver, Boulder, or Mammoth Lakes, I feel like the numbers that I'm getting from the watch, like instantaneously, wherever I happen to be standing, are lining up pretty closely to kind of like recorded and known altitudes for those regions as well. So I feel like the barometric altimeter does really well on this watch, which I've had other watches from other brands where they have barometric altimeters, but I'm not always so confident in the numbers that those other brands might be getting. The Garmin I feel like has always been spot on. The other things that I like about it are some of the features that it has for after the run. So immediately after the run, it gives you a nice rundown of the statistics from the last run in terms of how hard did you work, how far did you go, and what your average heart rate was was things like that, uh, which I find to be very useful. But it also has a lot of recovery metrics that I also think are useful. So it can give you kind of like your resting heart rate throughout the day, but it also gives you that sleep heart rate variability, which for me is a number that once I kind of figure out what my baseline is, becomes really useful when I note that there's changes to it. If it's lower, that means my body's working harder even at night and it's under a lot of strain. If that number gets higher, that means my body is feeling really recovered and relaxed relaxed. And the best way that I tend to look at the heart rate variability with Garmin is with the morning report, which I kind of really like. When you wake up in the morning, it tells you how good your sleep was, like how much you slept and how like interrupted it was. It also gives you your heart rate variability from overnight. So you can get a sense of like how rested your body was, or was it under strain even though you were sleeping. And then it gives you things like weather and a suggested workout for the day. So I feel like that's kind of like a nice way to wake up. It's a nice little dashboard feature that you get in the morning uh, that I actually think works really well. And then the one thing that didn't quite work for me very well at all was the music. So I didn't really test the music features of this Garmin 255 music watch. And the main reason for that is just, I had a real hard time connecting Deezer, which is one of the listening platforms that you can use to get music onto this watch. I signed up for a trial of the premium services, but I could never get like the Deezer app onto this watch. So that's something that no matter how hard I tried, I wasn't able to actually test. And of course, this watch does a lot of the other smart watch things that you'd expect. Not only does it automatically take your run and push that to the Garmin app, which can then push out to Strava and all sorts of other training apps that you might want your data to appear, but it can do stuff like respond to text messages if you have an Android phone, but you can also do things like Garmin Pay. So if you're out on a run, you don't have to bring a wallet with you. You can just bring the watch and if you can get the music to work, you get everything pretty much connected all in one little lightweight device. 
And I should point out that this is not a touch screen at all. So you can touch it all you want, but it's not gonna do anything. And for me and watches, that's really what I prefer, especially when we're talking about weather where it might be raining and I'm wearing a long sleeve and the sleeve is getting wet, or it's winter time and it gets cold and I'm wearing gloves and I'm trying to do things with a gloved hand. I really don't like touch screens on my running watches. I'd rather do everything with the buttons. And there are lots of buttons on the Garmin 255 Music uh, that are labeled, which helps me figure out the UI. And also they're nice and clicky and you know you're going to get the action that you want when you're pressing that button. All right then, let's get to the brass tacks of this watch. Is this watch any good at the $400 price? I'd say ultimately, Yes, this is a very good watch. In fact, it does pretty much everything that I, as someone who's primarily a roadrunner, everything that I need a running watch to do, this watch can do. But at that $400 price, I don't think it's the best value anymore. And there are some quirks that this watch has that are not the kind of fun and endearing kind of quirks, but they're quirks that are like kind of annoying. While it does the GPS tracing really well, and I feel like it's exceptionally accurate, but what doesn't feel so accurate is the pace. So GPS is great, but pace is always a little bit stingy, it feels like. So when every time I look at the watch, it always gives me a number that feels like it's slower than what I'm actually running. The other thing that I had some issues with is connecting this with my third party foot pod. So I use the Strive foot pod and although it's technically fully supported and able to get real time power meter numbers on the watch that I can see during an activity, I just felt like there was something going on with it that made the whole like system not really work well. Now this happened to me at Grandma's Marathon where it said that I ran less than 26 miles for the total marathon. And it also happened to me at the LA Marathon when I was testing the Garmin 945 LTE, again with that stride foot pod, it was shorting me a lot of distance. So I'm not really sure what's going on with there. I only seem to have problems with it when I use it with a Garmin watch, and that continued with the Garmin 255 Music. So that was a little bit of an annoying thing. It got to the point where I decided for the remainder of my testing that I would just kind of forego the foot pod and see how the watch stands up kind of like on its own. And that's what I've been running with for the past couple of weeks. So overall, this is a $400 watch. If you get it without the music, it's 350. And for me, I've been basically using it as a Garmin 255 without music. and. Looking at that by itself, I feel like that's a pretty good value. You're getting a lot of watch for the money. But this space, I feel like it's starting to get really crowded and there's a lot of really good offerings from the competition. You have the Pacer Pro, which comes in at $300 from Polar, and you've got the Pace 2 from Coros, which comes in at a surprising $200 that are offering pretty much the same features and functionality, but doing it at a cheaper price point. So I feel like at $400 or 350 without the music, you're getting a really great watch, but you might be able to get a better value elsewhere. I think it's ultimately gonna come down to whether you like being in the Garmin ecosystem or not. For me, it's not my favorite place to be, but I do find that the 255 Music is my favorite Garmin watch that I've ever tested. So those are my thoughts on the 255 Music. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hope you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?